This is a cool example of a recurrence relation coming up in nature. So with honeybees, uh, we can look at two casts of them. The drones only have a mother, and the mother is a queen, and queens have a mother and a father, which are a queen and a drone, respectively. And uh, if we look at these two basic rules, um, something kind of cool happens. If you look at um, if you just look at a, a single drone and you look at his family lineage, he had a mother who was a queen, and this queen had a mother and a father, and this queen over here had a mother and a father, and this drone had only a mother, this had mother, father, only a mother, and here we had another mother and a father. So if we wanted to look at how many bees are there in each generation, I could call this generation 1, so I'll say n equals 1, this is 2, 3, 4, so I could make a table of how many bees are in each generation and that would look like this. So if I call f of n the amount of bees in each generation, then in the first generation there was one, in the second generation there was one, in the third generation back there were two, and we had three and five. And you can predict the next one because here we have a queen, so that's gonna be two plus one, plus 2, plus 2, plus 1, so that's 8. So in the 6th generation there was 8. So, um, the chart seems a little unpredictable, and it seems like it would be hard to fill out this, ch to fill out this table without extending the chart a lot further. But um, the interesting thing is that we actually have enough information only from these two rules here to um, find out a recurrence relation that will describe how many bees there are in a given generation. So there's a couple of things to notice here. First of all, um, every bee has a mother, and that seems pretty obvious, but the it does end up being kind of important. Another thing that ends up being important is that um, that every queen on this chart is a mother. And so these two inf pieces of information together have um, significance. So some, something less obvious is that um, every bee has a grandfather. And every bee has one grandfather, exactly. Uh, we know that any drone and any queen, um, we're assuming, have the same sort of lineage. But if, if you look at a given drone here, he has one grandfather. Same with a queen, one grandfather. This queen has this grandfather. This drone has this grandfather. And the other piece of information going with this one is that Every, every drone on this chart except the first one is a grandfather. And so then the last piece of information which is extremely obvious is that every bee on the chart is either a queen or a drone. And so there's there's no worker bees here, in other words. Um, so if we wanted to look at the number of bees in a given generation, I'll say in generation n, then we can just say this, obviously this must just be the number of males plus the number of females by this, this last piece of information I have here. Um, and so, if I want to look at the number of males, 
Well, I know that in uh, a given generation, let's look at this one here, every single male is the grandfather of a bee, and that bee must be back in this generation, since it's a grandfather, it's two generations back. Then we also have that every bee has a grandfather, so that means that every bee in this generation has a grandfather that's in this generation, so you have a one-to-one -one correspondence between the number of males in this generation and the number of bees in this generation. So the number of males in, in the nth generation is equal to the number of bees in uh, two generations prior. And so then you can do the same thing for the number of females. Every female is the mother of somebody, and every, every bee has a mother. So there's three bees in this generation, and there's three queens in this generation. So the number of uh, females in a given generation is just the number of bees in the previous generation. And so this recurrence relation right here, um, together with two initial conditions, which are that the first term is one, and that the second term is also one, this is the definition of the Fibonacci sequence here. And you can see that these numbers here, uh, you might recognize them from the Fibonacci sequence. So in the next video, uh, I'm going to show how we can use a generating function to solve the Fibonacci sequence. And then I'm going to go more um, generally, how can we solve other second order uh, linear homogeneous constant coefficient recurrence relations.